Oh, oh my god. This place is so dusty. When was the last time you made a video, Yang? Ugh, why am I talking to myself? Alright guys, so it's been a minute and I apologize that I kept you guys waiting for episode 4 of Modern Weapons for Blade and Sorcery. I just had a lot on my plate, but don't worry. I'm back now and here to show you guys episode 4. I still can't do fingers. Ah, here we go. Episode 4 of Modern Weapons for Blade and Sorcery. Let's go guys. Alright guys, so for this video, the mods that I picked came from two very particular backgrounds. <laughs> so, the backgrounds that they are, are from our big cinema movies that we love to watch at the theater. And then, the other background are from our beloved franchises of video games. So bringing those two ideas together, this is a special kind of episode. This episode I'm gonna call, Movies vs. Video Games. <clears throat> okay, alright, gather around everybody, gather around. Yes, team movies, I'm talking to you, stop eating so much popcorn. And you, team video games, get off the couch. Come on, get over here, get over here. Alright, listen up here fighters. I want to see the best of kills, the best of highlights. I want you to prove to me that your fantasy weapons are the best of your genre. And if you just can't help yourself but throw some cheap shots at the other team, by all means, have at it. And for you there, the viewer, if you just so happen to feel personally attacked by your fandom, your lore, or your franchise, then you better go get your fanboys and girls so you can go cry on their shoulders. Because we're starting this fight right now! So for this first weapon, I had to pluck it out of a triple max prison. Some desolate slammer that's long forgotten by any decent folk. Getting weapons like these don't come around easily. So I know a guy who knows a guy. An outlaw. A criminal. Aferian. Here to slice up some necromongers, we have Riddick's Ulak Blades by Kravis. Deadly as they are artistic, these wild tongue blades curve right over the hands, just like a razor for your knuckles. These blades are iconic to Riddick, as he used them in one of his movies to kill a whole squad of necromonger grunts, slicing and stabbing his whole way through them. And now for our own pleasure, box your way at enemies and slice them up like ribbons or hit them with hammer strikes and bury those blades deep into their pixelated bodies. These blades do require a little time to get used to. You might find yourself giving enemies sliced up knuckle sandwiches more than cuts. I found that the general rule of thumb when fighting with these weapons was to give each swing your full attention. You get up real close and personal with your enemies, making sure that those hits are solid contact. One thing that I personally like to do when fighting with these blades is changing up the grip. I found that holding them pointed upwards to kind of make them look like tusks gave me more control and good stabbing angles at running some metal deep into those sweet spots. The Ulak blades are a mod suggestion that I personally added way back when the modding scene first picked up, so I'm quite happy to finally be able to showcase them to you guys now. And also because the blades are super lightweight, it's really easy to maneuver around the battlefield and even jumping off the ledges and performing some cool parkour kills. This weapon was definitely one that was really great fighting slow mode. Because the blades are a little tricky sometimes, just slowing everything down, spinning around and going for those real action type kills, it just made wielding these blades that much more satisfying. So enough talk, go get those action kills, leap off those ledges, and deal that beautiful death from above. Okay, so we can all agree, Riddick was quite the fighter, and quite the brawler. But if we're gonna say he's dealing death from above, then I think we're stepping into someone else's lane. Death from the shadows is child's play, when you're a master of killing in plain sight. Because nothing is true, and everything is permitted. Leaping into bladed sorcery from the Animus, we have the Assassin's Creed weapons of Connor's Tomahawk and Altair's Dagger by Yuri. Though the weapons are a world of history apart from one another, their job and mission remains the same, killing Templars. The Tomahawk is beautifully ported and performs exactly how it's wanted. Lightning fast striking with solid collision contact. The 
awesome design with the assassin symbol for the axe head hacks right through and into opponents with ease. I personally think that this weapon is one of the best for decapitations and dismemberment. And you know, for some game weapons, you just don't get the right appreciation for them until you got your own hands on them. And by this, I'm talking about Altair's Dagger, which is somewhat forgettable in the first Assassin's Creed game. But I'm gonna tell you that it just needed a fresh pair of hands to swing it and enemies to fear it. It's a throwback for sure to see, and Yuri did an amazing job at bringing both these weapons in Blade and Sorcery. But the true ace up the sleeve for a master assassin is the weapon that you didn't see coming. The Assassin's Hidden Blade, created by Alyosha. Don't be thinking on me that I was going to forget the most iconic assassin's weapon. The Hidden Blade sits on the left hand only by its current design, but hopefully we can see some improvements where we can have dual Hidden Blades in each hand. And although the Hidden Blade doesn't come with a cool function, such as popping in and out of the wrist, it still looks really awesome in game, and I know you're gonna love trying to do those cool assassination kills. And this just goes to show it doesn't take proper weapons to make a master assassin, and master assassin makes proper weapons. And with that lesson, always remember that nothing is true, and every- Well, looks like our new character Mr. Wick couldn't just quite help himself. Introducing the new Glock 3.0 by Johnny Johnny. Now you may remember this mod from a previous episode, but since then, Johnny Johnny has added a new part of this mod where there is now an attachable and detachable suppressor that you can connect to the front of the Glock. So I think in my last episode, I was talking about the Glock being for Matrix moments, but now, with the suppressor, it's more definitely a John Wick moment. Now the gun is still mostly the same, but I can tell that there might be some subtle changes. I think the gun does shoot a little bit louder than before, and that the bullets travel quite faster. But since I did cover this weapon before, there's not really much more new things I gotta say. Besides that, it's probably one of my favorite gun mods, and it's definitely one that you should pick up if you haven't tried any gun mods yet in Blade and Sorcery. But staying true to our John Wick character at the moment, there is another weapon I do have to show you guys to make sure he stays a character. So I hope you have your notebooks ready, because this next weapon is the Pencil by Jasper Creations. So for all you movie and John Wick fans out there, I did do him the service of giving him his most ultimate weapon, the Pencil. And yeah, it's your standard number 2 Pencil, but that doesn't mean it can't be your number 1 improv weapon. Now there's not much slashing or blocking with the pencil, just a lot of stabbing and poking. So potential combos are rather limited, but that's why you got me to demonstrate them all for you. So I wonder if that statement holds true. Is the pencil mightier than the sword? Or does the Glock just overrule everything? But I'll show you one thing that the Glock can't do. So we've gone through a lot of weapons so far. Some are iconic to the characters. Some are made for master assassins. And some weapons are just turned deadly by master assassins. But maybe the best weapons are those that are crafted by the player. So allow me to introduce Mine and Sorcery by Max Hyper, a mod pack of Minecraft diamond weapons. In this huge mod pack, it comes with a diamond shovel, hoe, pickaxe, axe, sword, trident, helmet, and a shield. I have come here to craft diamonds and kick ass. And I am all out of diamonds. To be honest with you guys and myself, I'm actually not much of a Minecraft player, so I'm taking this opportunity to really make up for the time. Slash and stab with this full assortment of weapons, just like normal ones. And even though they have their blocky shapes, 
and the entire thing looks like it could hit with the force of a Lego marble diamond block. Just swing with them naturally and you're going to have a great goofy time. All the weapons are designed with their comically blocky edges just like in the original game. But I think that the reported brothers here take those goofy edges to a deadly new mayhem. Sometimes I really thought that these weapons had like a sharp serrated edge. And if they do or don't, they still work perfectly fine, and they're really fun. Of all the weapons in this mod pack, I gotta say my favorite is the diamond sword. Probably because of all the times I've seen the nerf toy replica in stores. And I kinda think it's a pretty cool looking sword, even with all its jaggy edges. And I suppose you Minecraft players will appreciate this last one. I had to contact a few sources to really get the grand scope of this weapon, the Diamond Trident. In comparison to all the other models, it reminds me of a huge fork, but it does strike fear to the enemies if not striking a lot of holes in them. So I guess this statement does ring true, that when it comes to video games, Minecraft wins as the game of all ages and being the king of this genre. Hey, alright, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it took a minute to make, so sorry guys. Ugh, I'm really bad at staying on schedule. But hey, guess what? Episode 5 is... By the gods. If I have to listen to another child prattle along about being king, I'll send the Seven Kingdoms back into another war. Modern weapons of movies versus video games doesn't quite end here. Stay tuned, folks. I'll see you in episode 5.